Hello everyone, my name is Cywolf, and in 2021, Illumix released a FNAF AR update that introduced the health bar mechanics buff system and all sorts of things like that, and the leveling system. And a lot of people consider it to be the update that ruined FNAF AR, which is honestly a little bit ridiculous in my opinion, but I wanted to go over some changes that I think Illumix should make to it going into this year, as well as my overall thoughts on how the game was handled with that update. It definitely needs some tweaks, but I don't think it's nearly as bad as people make it out to be. The leveling system itself, although it is grindy, is something the game desperately needed to help with replayability. The game still has a lot of replayability problems, and it's still pretty repetitive, but the leveling system still helped a ton by giving players an actual progression goal outside of just collecting items. It gave you a reason to keep shocking animatronics you've already defeated for XP. It's grindy, but the game really needed it. I think some tweaks need to be made to the XP gain to allow more ways to get XP, and harder animatronics need to drop more of it. Springtrap drops the same amount of XP as a bare endoskeleton, which is honestly a little bit silly. Harder characters need to drop more XP. Why would I go out of my way to keep farming Springtraps for XP when I could just ask friends to keep sending me bare endoskeletons to defeat them for XP? There's no advantage to farming harder characters if you already have their items. So characters like Springtrap and whatnot should drop a substantially increased amount of XP. And as for more ways to get XP, you should get XP from daily challenges and salvages. It would also be nice if during events you could collect stacking XP boosters that would last for the duration of the event. So for example, as you collect through the rewards, you would get plus 5% XP and then it keeps stacking each time you get one up until the event ends and and then you lose that XP bonus, but it gives you a reason to play the game more during the event to get those bonuses. They could also do things like double XP weekends, more ways to get even more amounts of XP. Now, as for the elephant in the room, the health and shield system is something a lot of people had complained about, and I have seen complaints about it kind of, you know, reduce since the update initially launched, but it did, but it did cause a lot of confusion right off the bat, and a lot of people don't like it. Now, the reason the update was so controversial with the health and shield system on launch was because people thought that the health was unbalanced, when in reality it wasn't, it was just because of the way the map spawns were getting settled in with the new update. Lumix also wasn't very clear on how the leveling system worked with the health and shield system and it all just kind of came together into this hodgepodge of confusion that gave people the wrong idea of this system's balancing. When they released the update, there was a bug where characters who were higher than your level would still appear on the map when they shouldn't. So you started out and then right off the bat you would be fighting a Bonnie, but you weren't near enough his level to actually defeat him and you deal barely any damage. This is not how it was intended to be, but that's how it was for many players when the update first came out. And due to some glitches where the old streak spawns still bleed through the new spawning systems and you get characters who you aren't supposed to be getting at your level, some of those issues do still occasionally come up, but overall the system itself for the health and shield versus your level is relatively balanced. But even though it's still relatively balanced, it doesn't change the fact that the health and shield system only serves to extend the length of the encounter. Now, the health system itself isn't necessarily a bad concept. In theory, it would work well with this game, but the way it's currently executed with the current encounter mechanics just makes them longer and doesn't make them any more engaging. But these mechanics were necessary in conjunction with the leveling system because it gave the in-between levels between the character unlocks more purpose. As you level up, there should be a curve in the animatronic stats, but leveling up should also give you more power. You unlock the animatronics at different intervals, but if leveling up itself didn't give you this increase in power, there was basically no purpose for the in-between levels that you would get in between the different character unlocks. So in order to make the leveling system more meaningful, actual player power stats were necessary. But the gameplay itself wasn't really ready for this kind of mechanic, and it makes encounters pretty slow. 
it doesn't feel like you're depleting the animatronic's health. It just feels like you're surviving until the animatronic allows you to progress the encounter, which isn't how a actual fight against the animatronic should be. You should be able to deplete its health faster using your own skill. I think they need to introduce more ways to damage the animatronic outside of it just decloaking on the charge. An idea I thought of is maybe when it haywires, there could be a brief moment where the haywire eyes flash blue. When this happens, you could look at the animatronic and then shock it to damage it. So it would end the haywire early and damage the animatronic way earlier than you would normally have to if it charges and decloaks, but you would be at the risk of missing the shock and then shocking it when its eyes are red or white during the haywire and just getting hit or killed during the fight. That would really encourage perfecting your timings and getting better at the game to damage the animatronic sooner and end the encounter faster than you normally would through decloaks. Especially if you're going up against a hard character like Springtrap who constantly haywire chains. If you get that timing right, you would be able to use it against him to end the encounter way faster than you normally would, but you'd have to make sure you know what you're doing and you're skilled enough to do it or else he would be able to damage you back. But yeah, right now, having the health system purely rely on the animatronics decloaks to be able to deal damage to them makes the encounters way longer than they needed to be. Again, the health and shield system itself isn't inherently a bad concept, and it was necessary for the introduction of a leveling system like this, but it definitely needs work to make the encounters less of a slog and add more skill to depleting the animatronics health. Now, let's talk about buffs. Now, Buffs are pretty much one of the game's actual few pay-to-win mechanics, but at the same time, it's not really pay-to-win at all if you think about it. You can pay to get Faz coins to get more buffs, but at the same time, why would you? Technically, they can help you end the encounters faster with ultimate shocks and attack blocks, but at the same time, if you have any semblance of skill at the game, the buffs are entirely unnecessary. And if you're at the point where you need to buy buffs to survive, that's kind of a you problem. And even then, the game vomits free Faz coins in your face constantly for doing basic tasks. You can get up to 150 for your daily challenges, you also get them every now and then from the gift box, and you frequently find map balloons, which can give you them too, and it's very easy to get enough Faz coins to regularly buy bronze packages to stock back up on buffs if you even ever wanted them. Like, I use buffs every now and then if I have them, but I usually don't go out of my way to buy them unless I'm like messing around on a stream and I just have the Faz coins already in my inventory and I don't need to specifically buy anymore. Like, oh, I don't have anything better to spend these on. I'll just buy a platinum package for the heck of it and see what I get. But otherwise, you don't even need to buy them. They're not really that big of a gameplay mechanic. But this also leads to some problems because buffs are a kind of big new addition that came with the update to give you actual active use items during the fights, but at the same time they aren't that useful, but if they were useful it would make the game seriously pay to win, which is a bit of a problem. So buffs need to be more useful to make them actual better game mechanics, but it needs to be done in a way where it doesn't make the game full on pay to win. I think something Illumix could do would be to introduce a crafting system, where you defeat animatronics and gain specific materials from different animatronic types, and then when you get enough materials, you can craft buffs. This would give you a reason to seek out specific animatronics even after you've already collected them, and it would make buffs more readily accessible to free-to-play players without you having to buy them. You would have to grind animatronics to make the buffs you want, but it would give you a, you know, a pretty decent alternative without having to spend your Faz coins. Anyways, that is going to do it for this video on what I think should be done to change up the health and shield and buff mechanics going into this year. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video and want to see more content, please give a like and subscribe. It really helps the channel out, and I'll see you later. Have a good one.